Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Caroline Coons I'm with Wavefront. Um, we're just going to wait a couple more seconds here as we get our last couple attendees joining. Um, just before we begin, I'm going to take care of a couple of housekeeping items. Um, the first thing to note is that we are recording this session and afterwards we will send out a copy of the recording to all of the registrants so that you may rewatch this and share. Um, the next item to note is that this session uh, will end with a Q&A. So if at any point you have any questions, please use the chat box to type your message. Um, and that message will be sent to um, the panelists and we will be able to see that and be able to respond to your questions during the Q&A. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn things over to our presenter, Rick Cronin, and let him introduce himself. So hello and welcome. My name is Rick Cronin. I look after Wavefront technically for VMware EMEA. Um, I've been at uh, a Wavefront uh, solution architect for uh, the best part of a year now. Uh, what I'm going to do is just give you uh, a few slides as an overview of Wavefront and then take us straight into a demonstration so you can actually see what the product looks like and how it works. And then we'll open up for uh, some Q&A at the end. I expect this to take about 30 to 40 minutes, so uh, we won't take up the full hour. Um, and at the end, you'll be able to see some links uh, on the screen that will show you where you can actually take a, a self-service trial of Wavefront. So what is Wavefront? Wavefront is uh, software as a service. Uh, it provides uh, metrics monitoring and analytics as a platform. Um, that you can take metrics from many sources, whether that's uh, on-premise or using cloud-based solutions, and ingest them into our cloud-based service. And then you can run queries against the, your metrics to provide charts, dashboards, and build custom dashboards that can be viewed by your end users, whether that's the business, whether it's development teams, or site reliability engineering. Um, the, the beauty of, of Wavefront is it's been built from the ground up to be highly scalable and performant. And it allows you to, to take those metrics, ingest them, store them without rolling the data up uh, for up to two years, and for you to be able to use that granular data uh, to query the database and get visualizations that you can then create uh, true alerts on, and troubleshoot and iterate um, problems much faster. So the way we do this is we have, in the first instance, we have agents that can collect metrics from certain technologies. We use uh, agents such as Telegraph, StatsD, CollectD, et cetera. And we send those metrics through a proxy, which is effectively a gateway on premise to, uh, to the Wavefront service. We can ingest metrics from third party uh, solutions like Graphite, uh, Influx, and solutions that use OpenTSDV uh, through that proxy again into the Wavefront service. Uh, we can allow our customers to, um, to create custom uh, metrics so they can create um, telemetry within their code and send those custom uh, metrics through the proxy. We can take metrics from uh, log solutions as well. And then finally, we can allow cloud service platforms such as Azure, Amazon, Google, to send metrics directly to the Wavefront service. You can also uh, send via an API metrics directly to the Wavefront service as well. And we have um, more than 165 uh, different integrations now. We, uh, we build in the region of 30 to 50 new integrations every quarter, and we revisit old integrations as well and build a deeper understanding and, and more uh, meaningful dashboards as we go. So uh, this is a constantly changing uh, landscape for us, um, but effectively we can take metrics from many different uh, technologies, whether that's on-premise or in the cloud, different services, whether that's uh, uh, infrastructure services or, um, or services uh, using serverless technologies or Lambda type services, 
and we can ingest all of those different metrics from those different integrations. And I'll show you that in quite some detail during the demonstration. So the differentiators for the Wavefront is um, we have an advanced query language where we can uh, define more than 100 different mathematical functions against that time series. So that you can build analysis against those metrics and build charts that really mean something. You can get a lot more data out of those, those metrics using those analytics. As I said before, it's been built from the ground up for massive scale and availability. Our clusters in, in the cloud are highly available and, and highly scalable for that very purpose. We can actually ingest 5 million points per second uh, into the Wavefront service. Our dashboards are easily customizable and you can share them with different parts of the organization. And again, I'll show you what our dashboards look like during the uh, demonstration. And because of the way that we can apply a lot of logic to, to those time series, we can allow you to create very smart alerting for, uh, for those metrics. And you can create condition-based alerts so that you can, uh, you can only, you, you can generate very smart and real anomaly alerting against those metrics. With that, I'm going to actually go into the demonstration. I'm going to show you what the product looks like and then I'll open it up for, for questions. So I'm going to start on the integrations page and you can say that I've got a number of integrations. We are cloud agnostic, so there's integrations for Amazon, uh, Google, Azure. Uh, we have uh, integrations for many different um, container services, Docker, Kubernetes. We have support for many different flavors of Kubernetes. We have support for uh, web-based tools from the very traditional Microsoft IIS.net um, solutions through to the more modern uh, web technologies like Nginx and uh, Hadoop, Wildfly, Zookeeper, etc. Um, we have many um, integrations for uh, cloud services, so we can we can monitor serverless technologies. We can monitor uh, the different components supplied by Amazon, Google, and Azure. We can monitor traditional databases, as well as the more modern uh, data stores like Couchbase, et cetera. Uh, messaging, Kafka, RabbitMQ, et cetera. And if you already have some monitoring in place, if you're using something like Prometheus or Nagios or Zebix, it will take the metrics from those as well. So you don't lose any of that investment that you've made in starting to collect those metrics. What we want to do is we want to get those metrics in into the uh, to the Wavefront service in the best possible way and then allow you to use that data uh, however you see fit. And that data is always going to be granular. So when we store the data, there's no roll up of data. Um, so the, when you go back for up to two years, you'll see the data as it was originally collected. We have support for operating systems and an area where uh, a lot of our um, mature customers are using a lot of is the ability to create instrumentation in your application. So, so create, create custom metrics and send those into Wavefront as well. Um, we have integration to development tools, DevOps tools such as Jenkins, Chef, uh, Terraform, etc. And as you would expect with this being uh, an enterprise class solution, we have integrations to uh, the, the commercially uh, popular alert, alert notification methods such as PagerDuty, ServiceNow, OpsGenie. We have uh, simple sign-on capabilities with Okta, OneLogin, ADFS, etc. So we can provide many different integrations, both uh, ingesting data, but also integrating with notification and single sign-on technologies. Now. An integration to us is a couple of things. So if I click on the Amazon Web Services integration, as an example, you'll see that we have a method for collecting the metrics. And in, in the case of Amazon, it's to create a role within uh, Amazon, a read-only role, and then use that to forward um, CloudWatch or Metrics Plus 
metric straight to uh, the Wavefront service. Um, that's part of our integration. The other part, which is a very important part uh, of an integration for us, is that we provide you with a set of pre-configured dashboards so that you get a head start with, uh, with using metrics and creating dashboards. And if I click on something like the Amazon Summary, for example, you'll see that I've got some metrics around um, the, the projected spend, the number of EC2 instances that I've got either on demand or spot. Um, you can see that I've got uh, information about EC2, about Lambda, DynamoDB, and, and this is the information that you get um, from that integration. So we have many metrics and we've picked some key performance indicators to build uh, a particular dashboard for that technology. And You do a very specific area, drilling again, so you can get to a very granular level. And then you can synchronize, synchronize that chart against the rest of the dashboard. So you can start looking at correlating many different metrics against the same uh, point of time and, and start to look at getting, getting to a particular point in time and understanding where those issues are very quickly. But that to us is a starting point. And if I, if I go to one of the charts, maybe the Dynabo DB chart. You'll see that I can do a number of things here. The first thing is I can change the way that that looks. So I can change it from, in this case, a single stat view to a line plot or a stacked area. I can actually look at it as a tabular view. But I can also actually curate this into my own dashboards. So I can create custom dashboards as easily as just finding a chart that I that I want to display and adding it into a, a dashboard that already exists or saving it into a new dashboard. So creating a dashboard from that very first chart. The other thing I can do with this is from the chart, I can actually create an alert using that metric. So if I click on the alert uh, link here, you can see that I'm immediately into creating alert and I've got a condition here. Now Wavefront alerts, are based on conditions. So we have, you have to have a condition that's met before the alert is, is triggered. And you can have many different conditions that, that have to be met before that alert is triggered. Um, so you can have condition A, B and C all have to be met before uh, an alert gets triggered. You can choose the severity from information through to severe. And you can create a target list. In this case, uh, you could use a simple email or we, because we have a pager duty uh, integration set up, you can actually use the, the pager duty integration as well. But here you can see that uh, from here, I can actually create an alert that says if the response time gets larger than say 15 or 150 milliseconds, for example, I'll test that out and I can actually back test this over a particular period of time, maybe even eight days, to see if it triggers at a particular time. In this case, it, it doesn't. So I have to work out what is the best uh, trigger for that particular alert in there. Now, what I'm going to do is, is uh, actually take us to a dashboard that already exists. So this is the dashboard that's made up of um, EC2 instances and DynamoDB. And if I move down, you can see that I've got some... KPIs that make up this application itself. So I can see the average query time for the database. I can see the bytes sent and bytes received. I can see component information around the cache, the CPU, the processes that make up this application. Now, as I go down, you can see that um, the charts are built on demand. So uh, they're actually built by running that query against the data source. So you can immediately see this is a very uh, very performant way of actually collecting lots of metrics and, and showing them in a dashboard. Now, if I go straight back to the top, you can see that I've got a KPI around the number of transactions per second, and it's in an alert state. So you can see that actually I know already this, this has been generated by application server five. Now, in a production situation, uh, specifically with uh, new digital technologies, 
Um, things can go wrong very quickly, and they can also become a very public issue very quickly as well. So uh, using metrics, the, the, the goal for us is to, to actually triage these problems as quickly as possible and get to the most likely cause of, of an issue as quickly as possible. So by using metrics, what I can do very quickly is change dimensions of the, the, the time series. So in this case, I want to see which customers are, are affected. And you can see the chart on the top left rebuilds and it shows me that every single customer is being affected by the same uh, KPI. So all of my customers are being affected by uh, transactions per second dropping quite rapidly. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to see which application servers are, are being affected. Now I can see that all of the application servers seem to be fine except for one, which is application server five. So I'm actually going to change the dimension of the chart on the right hand side to, uh, to show me that all the metrics from application server five. Now you'll see that this is a lot of information. We actually call this the world's ugliest chart uh, because it's got a lot of metrics around the operating system and the application. So there's metrics supporting CPU, memory, uh, disk. Uh, it's got some metrics around Java, etc. And I could go through each of these manually to see if I can find what the issue uh, might be. Now that's going to actually take a lot of time. So with metrics, what we can actually do is we can correlate all the data in the chart on the right hand side against the shape of the chart on the left hand side. So by changing the dimension of the chart on the right, I can correlate against that transaction count. And what we're going to see is on the right hand side now, we've rebuilt the chart. And now I can see that uh, I've got just four, um, four series, time series that, that are, are showing now. One is the uh, transaction count, but the other three are quite important. So the first one is I can see that my free memory is dropping quite rapidly. I can also see that I've got many entries in, in the error log. And finally, I can see that my garbage collection count is going up quite rapidly as well. So now I know with a certain amount of confidence that I've got an issue with garbage collection and it's in its creating a memory leak on that server. And what I can do is I can create a short URL and I can send that to the development team that's responsible for that application and show them this dashboard in this context so they can see very quickly exactly what I've discovered. Um, I could either do that or I could update a travel ticket with exactly the same link and it will always be there in this context. Now what I can do from there is actually drill down into a little bit more detail on a more simpler use case. So here I've got um, another use case which is a, a code deploy and I've got a metric which is CPU load average over one minute for all of my server farms. So you can see that's a lot of servers and I can also see that an event has been generated by the change management which is a code deploy at 2.15 in the morning. Now that's a lot of information there, but I can sort of see that there's been quite a huge increase in, in uh, load since that time. So well, the first thing I want to do is I want to simplify that line. So I'm going to use a, a function called average to average all of my sources to create one single timeline. Now I can see that there is quite a significant jump in CP utilization across my farm, but that may be a normal uh, consequence. That may be um, due to uh, a security scan that happens every night. So this might be normal behavior. So what I want to do is actually want to compare that with the previous day. So I'm going to use another function called lag. And now we can see that a second line is drawn and the previous day was pretty much flat line throughout that morning. So now I know that that's a real anomaly and I can do something about that uh, as I did before, I can create a short URL to, to demonstrate what I've seen. Or I could actually go further and start looking at building um, uh, more queries that suggest that uh, I need to look at the standard deviation. And if the standard deviation is greater than X, then I could create a, uh, an alert from this in an automated fashion. So I can actually start looking at creating some smart analysis on a daily basis. 
Now what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to just take us into a, a clear chart and just show you what, what's building these charts. So the query language that build, builds these charts. So you can see here I've got a query and uh, I've got um, a checkbox against uh, the query builder. So now it's going to actually guide me through building a query. So if I type in uh, what I might need, so load average, for example, over one minute, and if I hit return, it will build the chart for me and it will build it from all sources that are generating a metric of this name, CPU load average for one minute. Uh, and that's a lot of data. So maybe I want to filter that. So then I can look at filters and I can look at tags or clusters. In this case, I'll use source. And let's just look at maybe the database servers. And if I choose a wildcard, then it should just give me only the database servers and if I hover over that you'll see that I've got database server 1 through to 10 that's showing in now then I can start looking at, uh, looking at different functions I can run against it. The first thing is that I can look at looking at uh, uh, the average function that we saw earlier on and as I hover over each of these it will actually build the chart so it can give me a, a, a an idea of what that that chart might look like. So I can average this and create just one single um, one single time series here. And I could do that again. I can add another function now, and I maybe want to use uh, a moving medium. So I can see what that looks like, and I could add that in there, and it will change the line again. So I can start looking at using uh, moving mediums to to display the chart in in whichever way I want to there as well. And then I can choose how to display the chart. So here we're using a line plot, but I may want to use a stacked area. It's going to be a very boring stacked area there. Or I may want to choose uh, to look at this as a single stack view. So to actually just have a, a single picture of what that looks like. There we go. And then I can actually look at... Um, a few different things on this. So I can actually create this as a spark line. So I can change this to the background and I can then color code it. So you can start creating flags that are very easy to view in a dashboard. Uh, and once I'm happy with that, take the spark, uh, spark line off if I want to. And then I've got the ability to display this as, as maybe status to so change this to status for example and then if I want to then I can then um, create a new dashboard to this so this is the starting point of my dashboard if I go in here I'll say my dashboard and if I create this then I'm, I'm presented with the dashboard editor and you can see that my first chart is in there as, um, as a spark line. Uh, I can change the, uh, the section to be uh, status, for example. And then I can create a new section, which is maybe um, infrastructure. And I can add more charts if I want to in here. So I can add a new chart here. And I could say maybe I want to look at uh, memory this time. And then do exactly the same thing again. And if I accept that, then I've got a second chart in here. And then I can save this. And I've got the start of my, my custom dashboard. And that's how we, we generate custom dashboards. Uh, and what we like to say is in, in this position, what you need to do is you need to capture all of the metrics that make up the entire application stack. And it really doesn't matter if those components are on premise or in the cloud or a bit of both. You could have um, some systems of records still on premise and some services that you're consuming in, in the cloud but you can capture all of the metrics from each of those parts of your application and create a dashboard that's very specific to the application stack. 
and, and show everything regardless of where it's from in one place. And this could be your, your first pane of glass and the first place you go to, to triage an issue and start looking at uh, what that, that application looks like and, and spotting trends through, through the shapes in the time series. I'm just going to go uh, finish by going back to the uh, integrations so to show you how we, we, uh, we have those integrations and how we're building these integrations on, on a regular basis. So you can see that you can start with, uh, with an operating system and then you can add things like Nginx or if, it's, if you've got an on-premise uh, Kubernetes environment then you could pick on something like Kubernetes and PKS and you can start with a dashboard from PKS, like so. And then we'd expect you to actually start looking at adding in some of the services that are running inside the containers. So maybe part of your application is an Nginx load balancer. So you, you'd add that in there as well. And you'd build a, a, that dashboard based on exactly what that end user or that line of business actually needs to, to see whether that's a site reliability engineer whether that's the development team or whether it's the business owner and they need some some high level uh, sla information that's based around the application stack so with that i'm going to go back to the the presentation and just open this up for uh q a We'll just see if there's any questions at all. Now, that's a very good question. Um, the question is, do you charge for the integrations? Um, the answer is no. So the integrations we, uh, we develop to be able to uh, gather metrics from different sources. The, the charging method that we use, it's subscription-based, and it's based on the number of points that we ingest on your behalf. So um, when you collect metrics from different sources, we capture the number of metrics that you're sending to us at the rate of uh, the number of points per second. And that's what we charge a subscription based on. So the, the integrations are a, a free part of the platform that we provide. Another question here, do you integrate with uh, single sign-on solutions? Yes, we do. We have um, integrations for uh, all SAML um, single sign-on um, providers, uh, including things like Okta, uh, ADFS, Google. Um, so it's very easy for us to, uh, to allow our customers to use a single sign-on for Wavefront. Yeah, Dave, uh, so another question, what's about data retention and aggregation? So we retain the data for um, two years at the moment. So we don't actually delete or archive any data at all for, for two years. Um, now, as far as aggregation is concerned, we do not aggregate the data. So we don't roll the data up at all. We store uh, our customers' metrics in, in their rawest form. So if you are collecting metrics at the rate of every second, we will actually store those metrics at the rate of one second, which enables you to actually query um, Wavefront and get those metrics um, in a chart at that rate of one second intervals. We don't roll that up at all or aggregate that data. Uh, and actually, the, 
the whole service is all based around charging on the number of points that you you send to us per second so there is no charge for uh, the infrastructure or the storage it is just one flat fee and that is the ingestion rate on the metrics that you send us so um, just to be clear you pay for a service uh, in the form of a, a subscription that subscription is uh, based on the number of points per second that you send to us. There's no other charges at all. Okay, so just to put the last slide on, um, there's some resources here. So um, you can still go to wavefront.com and there are a lot of resources in there. There's a lot of blogs. Um, there's links to some videos. Uh, those videos are, are roughly two minutes in, in length and they show some, some real world application of Wavefront um, uh, in the example of use cases. And there's a 30 day trial that you can use. It's a full functioning uh, platform. So when you sign up to use uh, Wavefront, you get access to all the integrations and you get access to the alerts as well. You, you can generate the alerts as you saw uh, with me. Um, there's no restrictions uh, on, on the integrations at all. Uh, the only uh, restriction is that you're limited to a period of 30 days. Um, the only other thing around that is if you're based in Europe, if you start a trial, then you should expect an email from me uh, to say hi um, when you start that trial. All right, thank you, Rick. I'm gonna just kind of wrap things up here. Um, again, if you have any, any other questions, um, shoot us an email, visit the site. There's a place where you can um, contact us. Um, and I'd encourage you to sign up for a trial as well. Um, as Rick said, it's completely free and you get the full, full product to try out. Um, and so with that, thank you for joining everyone. And thank you to Rick. And we will be sending out the recording of this webinar tomorrow. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.